Uh, just before you begin, Senator Crawford, I ask the members to recognize the presence of former Member of Parliament Raymond Price. Welcome to the ce cerebral hub of Jamaican democracy. <laughs> <laughs> Senator. <laughs> Senator Damian Crawford. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <laughs> the the um, welcome for former member of parliament, Mr. Raymond Price, is indeed in order, and I join in welcome, Mr. Price, and thank him for for his support. Mr. So President, I stand here on my fourth presentation in the Senate. So I, I, I'll catch you. I have no intention to catch you, Matthew. Yeah, <laughs> we expect to, in short order, be in another place. Yeah. <laughs> but, Mr. President, <laughs> you don't worry. But, in fact, <laughs> But, Mr. President, it's indeed an honor to be a part of 21 Jamaicans blessed with the opportunity to impact thought, influence policy, and to act within the upper houses. And I hope that one day I'll be able to tell my grandchildren that I serve with the likes of a Lambert Brown and a Donna Scott Motley, Peter Bunting, Janice Allen, Floyd Morris, Gabriel Morris, but indeed also Aubin Hill, Senator Golden Campbell, who I must admit I was impressed with your presentation um, last Friday. Um, but I, 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 I do enjoy listening and um, hearing you. Members such as Don Webby, and I look forward to gaining Senator Rodriguez's agreement even against her will almost every week. <laughs> she's, she, I know she's, she's locked in. I know she's locked in. But sometimes, boy, I see she feels depressed when she has to agree. I also admire and love the calmness that has been exhibited by Senator Leslie Campbell. And Senator Campbell is not without effort that I try to be calm myself. It's just a failing. <laughs> just has not, not happened. Indeed, yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, sure strategy. But indeed, Mr. Speaker, I really am grateful for the experience and that includes uh, working with you who have been, no, not the speaker, sorry. Let's look up as <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Mr. President, but the rightful president. The rightful. I do look forward. And I, and I thank the president. Um, president Tom Tavares Vincent, um, who has been very kind indeed. Sometimes when people see some of the videos coming out of the Senate, they may not know that after he had to con confirm that he got a few blows. <laughs> <laughs> and I confirmed that his intervention was necessary. But in all things, I want the public to know that we are indeed quite good friends. I'm sorry that Senator Johnson Smith is not here because today and many other preparations, I, I, I prepare trying to figure when she's going to intervene on a point <laughs> of honor. <laughs> I have about four of those today, so I'm very sorry that she's not here today. But I, okay, I, I accept, but I do enjoy. And I also enjoy Senator Fraser Beans then shouting her support, um, having heard the points of honor. I really do enjoy, and I wish we would spend more time together, um, Senator Senator Gill, I always wonder why you're not on this side, being that we agree on so many issues. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a good comrade on that side. <laughs> yes. But <laughs> socialist thinking. Yes. Yes. I didn't, you didn't look too happy at the conference, I must say. But um, I can understand. And of course, an actual friend, Senator Samuda and Senator Williams, outside of this um, house. Um, we are indeed friends and have many a drinks together. 
I, and and my chess my chess partner there sitting as one day busher, um, sly as a fox, and we always have to prepare for where he'll take the debate. Mr. President, I would like to say to you, as I congratulate Matthew on his um, on his engagement as well, on his engagement. No, not yet. I congratulate Matthew on his engagement. I also must thank my family, Mr. President, my mother, who has become a social media expert. Ah. <laughs> she finds everything that I say and everything that is said about me. So be very careful of what you say about me because my mom will find it and then engage my sisters in a dutiful debate and essay type conversations of what is the pros and cons of my utterances or utterances made in support or against. I love my sisters, Georgia, Kerry, Cheryl, and Evelyn. And I also must thank my 52 cousins for their support. <laughs> my mother has 11 brothers and sisters. So I have a lot of family. That is why when Matthew thinks that he can bully me, it can't work. I'm an army. My army is large. <laughs> I have 52 cousins. <laughs> and, and, and I don't mention, and I must say for the record, specifically thanks to my uncle, but also a Senator Ransford Bram, whose intervention to take me under his roof as a teenage boy was a necessary intervention for the way that my life has turned out and it has changed my life. I'm very sorry he's not here to hear this thank you. If Jamaica could get one Ransford Bram per family, it would be a change that we need. But until then, we'll continue to lobby for one degree per household. Ah. Mr. President, I also like to thank the staff, in particular, Mrs. Valerie Curtis and Captain Blake and their entire team who have been excellent. Long may this beautiful picture of Mrs. Curtis be on the walls yes. of the parliament. <laughs> I, 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 I quite thank you. And those who are present, those who are the great chief supporters of the Red Nation, I'd like to thank you as well. I'd like to thank, by name, Rachel A. Thompson, Terence Muir, and Danishka Williams, who assisted in the preparation of this actual presentation on the Code Red. Yeah. I want to thank them, and I'm grateful for their confidence, and I'm grateful for those who have showed up and um, in their own red. I, I, I look forward to making this presentation. I say again, Mr. President, that I was in the grill with Senator Samuda when he got engaged. Oh, you were there? I wasn't present. It was a big secret. <laughs> we, we had a full conversation about going to the grill. I invited him for a drink and then heard nothing. The next thing, <laughs> in why. complaining about his lack of communication, <laughs> I was told that he got married, that he was busy, he was that he got engaged. And he has been encouraging me since then, yes. Mr. President. Yes. yes, yes. He has been encouraging me to join him <laughs> in the engaged train. Yes. But I must be wary of his encouragement because based on his use of statistics, <laughs> Senator Samuda is suggesting that if I find a lady that treats me well for two weeks, I should immediately get married because of that treatment. He says, in two weeks, well, two good weeks might deserve another two, but not an engagement. And what is worse is Senator Samuda is suggesting that even if I had a bad experience for four years, I should ignore that four years and marry this lady after two weeks. This is what he's stating under the state of emergency. Because in 2021, in 2021, the first week of the state of emergency was 35 murders, an increased Senator Bunting of almost 37%. Senator Samuda did not use that week as a basis to cancel the state of emergency. Lo and behold, he's using this week as a basis of continuation of the state of emergency. Senator, <laughs> using 2018. What I'm saying is, we've had that debate, and I will not delay myself 
too long <laughs> in that debate. We can schedule over drinks that other conversation. But what I would also not take Senator Samuda is being chided for standing up for the constitution for which we were sworn to protect. And if there is any revision of history, it is really being made by that side and in particular the Prime Minister. I don't know, um, Sir Major, is it Major Rocky Mead? Major General Rocky Mead very well. I, I, I can't remember having met him. But in truth, he should not have been put in the position Absolutely. to be publicly criticized. You were the ones who took the steps to put him in a position that it was not within the Constitution for him to be put in a position. Who should be chided is the Prime Minister of this country that has taken no less than five steps to abuse the Constitution for which he is the chief protector. No less than five steps. I want... He's at constant war with the Constitution. Let me look at some of those. The pre-signed letters for the Senate was found to be unconstitutional. Having been challenged by one of those, that side, that was found to be unconstitutional. The NITS proposition was also found to be, by the court, unconstitutional. And again, proposed by the Prime Minister. The Major General Rocky Mead's ascension had to be withdrawn based on the constitutionality of that. The probation that he proposed for the Chief Justice, Justice Sykes, had to be withdrawn. Justice Sykes himself had to fight for weeks to be appointed. And so the constant disregard didn't end there because it continued with the states of emergency, which the Jamaica Labour Party continued to claim is not against the Constitution when the courts have found. They said, it, and you know, what is it, you know what's the problem? When they have in the conversation and the ruling is being stated, they say you cannot talk about it because it is being challenged. Right. <laughs> so when the proof of the pudding comes to the fore, they say don't talk about it, it is being challenged. But it was clear, once again, stifle your right to freedom of speech. So, where the concern should rightfully be is with the Prime Minister's constant abuse of the Constitution and constant disregard. I have no doubt that Major General Rocky Mead is a true servant of this nation. And he should, he sh and then promote him to, well, you see, this is a party of ideas. You keep on, <laughs> you keep on educating and informing. But remember that they have not appointed a czar for security since they promoted the last commissioner. So maybe they can put him there for the um, national security advisor, and he can continue to serve. It's a party of ideas. There's so much recommendation we give them, I will just start. So, President, I also want to say my condolences to one who wanted to be here, and I'm sure is watching, Dean Peart, former minister, whose mother yes. has died. Yes. Yes. And I want to say, sir, I know you're watching. Thank you for your support. You have been in my corner since the first day I was introduced into East Rural, and I'm sorry you're not here today. Mr. President, this presentation I'm making today is under the name Code Red because the education sector is indeed in a state of emergency. Yes. The education sector is what defines who we are based on what the children understood to be proper and rightful learning in the past they act in the present. Yes. If we do not understand the nexus between a state of the nation as is and the state of education, then I'm going to seek to take this effort to teach what is that right, nexus professor. as we move forward. Right. The first phrase of the education sector plan, Mr. President, states that, states that Jamaica's vision 2030 education sector plan, every child can learn and every child must learn. Mr. Speaker, Code Red is defined as a, Mr. President, 
as a very serious security warning or threat indicates emergency situation or threat of dangerous situation that has deteriorated drastically so as to continue an emergency. So, President, let us look at what it has been stated in the Vision 2030 plan. It is indeed a good representation of what a Christian country should always embark on to ensure that there is a role for both God and man in the execution of our activities. Yes, when it says every child can learn, that is what God's gift has been yes. to our children. Indeed, Johnny Central, and you have always heard me say, none of us were born with their talking. We learn to talk. We weren't born walking. We learned to, to walk. So God's gift is evident from the nine-month-old that a child can learn. It means that, Senator Campbell, if our children were bright at nine months, it is the failing of men why they are done at 19. Yes. If our children learn to walk and talk, then what is the reason they can't learn math and English? Yeah. And so therefore, while God has taken and played his role, our systems have failed our children moving forward. I'm going to look at some of the failures that are happening within our system. And Senator Golden, I'm going to ask you please to look at some of the numbers that we're presenting. Because you recognize, as you stated last week, it's an emergency situation. I'm going to start with PEP. At the PEP level, we found that 18,000 males, 17,000 females, approximately 36,000 children sat the PEP examination in 2022. The number that was absent for whatever reason was only 2%, and that is not unreasonable because they might be sick or all of these things that went. So therefore, at this age, 36,000 or 35,292 sat the PEP examinations. So President, a summary of the report will show that there are four categories that children would have been placed in based on those results out of that 2022. This is for 2022. And this is information produced in a report that was distributed by the Ministry of Educa Education under the signature of Minister Favor Williams. Sorry? Grade 6 PEP results. So... What they have are four categories, beginning, developing, proficient, and highly proficient. And all students would be placed in one of those categories. The first two would suggest they are not proficient, and the second two would suggest they have achieved proficiency. So I will just take this time to give you a conversation, Sophie, of what these two, what these mean. Beginning students, at this level demonstrate limited or no evidence of required competence necessary at grade six. As specified in the national standards curriculum, these students will need intensive ongoing academic support in grade seven. Developing students at this level demonstrates partial evidence of required competence necessary for grade six level. As specified in the national standards curriculum, these students will need targeted academic support in grade seven. So therefore, those two, both the beginning, if you may go back, Sophie, if the beginning and the developing are not at the level that they are able to be um, left without additional support, Senator Samuda. The other two are now the ones who have gained the proficiency. And here it says students at this level demonstrate adequate evidence of the required competence necessary for grade, at grade six, as specified under the national standards curriculum. These students may need minimal academic support or extended learning activities. So even though number three was said to be proficient, they still were not able to be independent, needed some additional support at that level. And the final, which is highly proficient, Students at this level demonstrate an advanced level of competence necessary at grade six, as specified by the national standards curriculum. They may need extended learning activities at grade seven because of their abilities. They make them do more things and you do 
whatever. So what we have found was the results. I'll now have them put forward for you. In mathematics, Senator Golden, 17,307 or 49% of our students did not achieve proficiency. In mathematics, 17,307 or 49% did not achieve proficiency. You see the results here? It is taken almost 8% of our boys was at the beginning stage and they're in grade 6. And an additional 46.8% um, of our boys was at the developmental stage. So therefore, at the mathematics, 17,307 were not proficient going into grade 7. For social studies, 16,401 or 46% of our children did not achieve proficiency. 16,401 did not achieve proficiency. In sciences, 16, go back, Sophie, sciences, 16,249 or 46% did not achieve mastery or proficiency in sciences. Remember, the proficiency have a lower level proficiency and the ultimate level of proficiency. They did not achieve not even the lower level, level three of proficiency. And in language arts, 8,063 or 23% did not achieve proficiency in language arts. You see, there's a thing about numbers, you know, that when you come from these 16,000, the 8,000 don't sound so, so, so bad. bad, like, well, that's not so bad. But 8,000 of our children. Senator yeah. Campbell. <laughs> If we start at 8,000, I would have said 2,000 or so, so bad. But because we start at 16 and 17,000, did not receive minimum proficiency moving forward. Now, Mr. President, would you believe in the same report put forward under the signature of the ministry and the signature of the minister, I quote the minister said, based on the student's performance, it is evident that education system at the primary level is moving in the right direction. Mr. President, what we have just highlighted here could not lead to a conclusion by a minister that education, at best, it shows that education is still in crisis. But it cannot suggest that it is moving in the right direction when 17 and 16,000 of our children was not achieving mastery. Unless you're coming from the full 30,000. And when we look back at some of the historical data, especially at the GSAT level, which is an unfair combination, it's a different exam, they were at 55 and 56%. It would have been immaterial changes up or down compared to 2018 numbers or 2019 numbers. So what we have found is a untruthful analysis, a head in the sand, yes. that will therefore not lead to sufficient intervention if after the numbers we have shown in the same document says that based on the student's performance, the numbers we have shown, it is evident that education system at the primary level, which is where the prep exam is done, is moving in the right direction. If it is for that alone, we could have called for the resignation of the Minister of Education. That is unfortunate and irresponsible. Mr. President, we move to CXCs. And I hope um, to be able to identify the results. Uh, CSEC, yes. Um, showing our age. Yes. The failure, I'm going gonna... to... Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to state it though. Sir President, the failure become even worse at the secondary level. So we started Senator Bunting bad. And it deteriorates as we move forward. The 2022 results again gained by the Ministry of Education, and here I must congratulate the Ministry. Oftentimes, you're finding it difficult to get information when you request it. 
in less than a day, the ministry was willing to provide information that I requested. And I must thank the team at the ministry. And maybe thank even the minister, because some ministers kind of make people feel afraid to share um, this information. But the information that the ministry sent suggests that in 2017, 200, I'm oh, sorry, 26,070 children sat or was entered for English A. And it suggests 70% pass English A. In 2018, 24,805 and 75% pass. In 2019, it says 24,069, 82% pass. And in 2020, 23,719, 86% pass. And unfortunately, going down in 2021, 73% um, pass out of the 22,765. It don't sound bad. It don't. It don't sound bad. <laughs> you then go to mathematics, 23,000 in 2017, 965, 50% pass. 2018, 22,813, 57% pass. We move forward to 2021 for saving time, 42% pass, coming from 62% pass in 2020. It don't sound bad. But Senator Golding, I have had opportunities to be in schools. I was a teacher in school before, and I volunteer to teach in different schools. And it drew to my mind, I started to question, but this don't look as bad as I think it is. Because if you look at English, which we are saying is a second language, 82% passed in 2019, no sound bad. But I remember having gone to an inner city school, and I asked the principal, give me all your maths children, I will give them a few hours. And only 28 children showed up. So I then sent back to the ministry to say, okay, you sent me how many sat the exam, send me how much was enrolled in school. Okay. When you check how much was enrolled in school, Senator Fraser Bates, you see a very different situation. Well, COVID would have been 2020, so the performance in 2019 and 2018 would not have been. So maybe the ministry could say 2021 would have been COVID impacted because 2021 was very poor. You understand? So we, 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 would have, we would have said maybe you have a point with that one. But let us look at how many people were enrolled. In 2017, 39,178 children were enrolled. Only 26,000 was allowed to sit. 13,000 was not allowed to sit. A third, a, a third of the cohort. You mean not qualified to sit? Well, allowed might be an improper term. I don't know if they wanted to sit. They did not, I don't, they did not sit. 13,000, a third. In 2018, 36,260 students were enrolled. 24,805 entered that exam 12,000 a third was not entered in this examination I come to 2020 for the sake of time 35,511 only 23,719 entered 12 more thousand was not allowed or did not sit. I don't want to be because you see, if Senator Johnson Smith was here, point of information. <laughs> How you know they were not alone? Right. I am. I, I and I stand corrected. Did not sit. Did not sit because I do not want no the principals to be lambasted to say that they are seeking to protect their numbers because later down you realize that there are reasons that some might not have sat this examination. Mr. President, when you look at these numbers, it suggests that in English language, not 87% and 74%, 48% in 2017, based on the enrollment numbers, 2017, before COVID, 50% in 2018, 
54% in 2019. In the belly of COVID, 57%. And in 2021, 42%. This is an emergency situation. But you don't see the level of the emergency until you look at mathematics. In 2021, 36,748 students were enrolled. Only 20,348 sat the exam. Not passed the exam, you know. Sat the exam. Of those total enrolled, 22% Past mathematics. Of the enrollment numbers, 22% pass what is a key subject of logic. No wonder our children are incapable to reason. 2021. Well, I don't know. I don't blame for the opposition. But the, the lack of logic and reasoning may be why you have some people who commit a murder and don't recognize the finality of their actions. Incapable to see and solve for it. Senator Samuda, if this is not an emergency, I do not know what is an emergency. Senator Fraser Bates. Go again and let me Continue. go to that one. Yes, go, go to the other one. So we start to look at five subjects, including mathematics. Five subjects, including mathematics, is what is perceived to be a minimum reasonable achievement for graduation yeah. at the CXC level. Yes. But it's also the standard for joining the police force. So I use it connect to connect the dots. Because the police force can't get enough people. Now, why is it that they can't get enough people? One of the reasons they are not qualified to meet the standard. So bad is the situation, Senator Samuda, that the police force no longer asks for maths. It asks for a numbered subject so you can go with it. accounts. What? Accounts is not a measure of reasoning, you know, which is a skill you want police to have. Accounts is not a measure of logics. Accounts is simply a numbers course. That is where we are. But let us look. This is information provided by the Ministry of Education. In 2020, 28.4% of the cohort get five subjects, including maths and English. Imagine Senator Campbell. What would be the uproar in the United States if 28% get a GED? What would be the uproar? But in 2021, it get worse. No, no, no. 17%. 17% of our children get five subjects, including maths and English. No, no, no forward on the analysis because at this time now I figured that maybe the president now would say what about 2022 why don't put 2022 2022 was worst speaker's time has expired <laughs> remember I had a long run up you know okay Senator. Yes. Mr. S Mr. President given that the speaker's time has expired I move that we extend the time for him to complete his presentation in a reasonable period of time. Thank you. <laughs> I've already questioned the speaker's time to be extended so for him to complete lunch. his presentation. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. <laughs> Senator Crawford. <laughs> yeah, Mr. President. So as to not be accused, because the numbers for 22 weren't sent, I found a report that said in Gleaner, performance decline in CSEC math and English language in 2022. 2022 was worse than 17%. So, make a look some more. In the last five years, based on the information provided, 185,000 
896 young Jamaicans enrolled in secondary schools. Only 43,000 got a minimum of five subjects. Out of 185,896. So when they start to say, how come the music start to say fully dance? The majority of the market, based on their lack of academic success, perceive themselves and has been accused by the society as being fully dance. Not the music, the market. The real culprit is the system created within the society that calls for a child that could learn at nine months to be done at 19. Not fully Go again, Senator Fraser Bean, because it's getting worse. It's getting worse. I show you here, the orange line is those who did it. The blue line. So the yes line is blue. And the no line is the... It's supposed to be our next color. <laughs> but can you imagine that? They did not get those subjects. Continue, Senator Fraser. The police recruit persons with five subjects, as you would know, Senator Bunty. And they expect that you're under the age of 30 and over the age of 18, 18 to 30. So for the 12-year period that exists, for the 12-year period that exists, Mr. President, the recruitment tool um, pool for the police force is 105,000 possible persons. Most of those would have been wanting to be doctor, lawyer, and Indian, and chief. So within the pool of five subjects, the police force is not the most attractive. If we should say those who don't qualify, then the recruitment pool for the gangs is 446,150 between the ages of 18 to 30. Four times. It is almost a miracle that we're not worse than we are. Four times the size. Put that in the context that there's almost no place for the uneducated in the economic activity of a country. Because those who used to wash clothes have been replaced by a washing machine. Those who used to chop bush replaced by a weed walker. Those who used to mix cement have been replaced by premix chalk. I remember as a boy, 50, 60 people said, I'm going to do a roof, I'm going to deck a roof. The whole community came out. Now it's two men with a premix chalk. Yeah. So there's no muscle work anymore. And in our society, the minimum acceptable to join the police force is four times less than those who could not if they so desire, based on the requirements of the police force. If that is not code red, I don't know what exactly is. Mr. President, I did some further analysis. What could cause this? Senator Golden, we have to now start to ask ourselves because when 80% or 83% is not achieving a standard, it is no longer possible to be the individual's fault. It must be systematic outcomes that cause 83% to not achieve the minimum standards. So I, 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 I started to do my research. I started to dig deep. And you know Jamaica loves to say that 100% enrollment and 96% enrollment. The World Bank said don't use enrollment because enrollment don't reflect attendance. That's right. A lot of the kids you see out at the stoplight enrolled. are enrolled, yes. meaning registered to a school. Yes. But they do not attend. Yes. Let us look at that reality. They say at pre primary education, which is basic school, approximately 86% is attending. Now, recently we heard of a big hullabaloo that only 50% of 0 to 6 are in schools. But the real truth is 0 to 3 is seldom in a school. 
It is the Ruel, um, Senator, Ruel Reed, former senator, that came with this brain builder thing. I'll touch that soon. So when the World Bank is looking at the basic school, which is age three to six, they say about 86% of our children are attending. Now, don't underestimate the, the negativity that we're still seeing from basic schooling. Because it, if you have 40,000 people and you have about 15% of 40,000, then you look on 6,000 not attending. Yeah, that's a big number. 6,000 not attending. No, the, 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 the police um, commissioner said 300 violence producers. So if you have 6,000 not attending, my God, if you get 10% out of that, you're going to 600 violence producers. Don't underestimate, but it's okay, we can work with it. Primary education, 92 to 91 percent attending. But then look what happens at lower secondary school, 75 percent attending. By the way, the light blue line is 2010, the dark blue line is 2018. In 2010, we were at 75% attending. In 2018, we are 72. Not right direction. Not right direction. Upper secondary school, which is grades 10 and 11, 58% attending. Then no wonder one third never sit. How should they sit if they don't go? So therefore, we're losing about 20% yes, after grade 9. Yes. Mm -hmm. If this is not an emergency, if this is not an emergency, and there is no anxiety being created within the ministry. Let me go further. So we look, why? My God, it now is so good. <laughs> no, because... I, I prepared, I prepared this, yeah man, I'm going on my screen. I prepared this in particular for Senator Golden, you know, because I know Senator Golden wants to say, yeah man, the numbers. Senator Golden, reasons given, this is a World Bank study. I want to read the, the lower part for you so people don't think it's my graph. Not attending school, drop out before grade 11. 17 to 21 year old world bank based on jamaica survey of living conditions so this is not my numbers what are the reasons given for not attending school 57 percent of all age school students all age. All, age. all age said that they reached the terminal grade so them stop 57 percent 34% of primary junior high. You know them have this one where it's not really all age. I think it's got 10 grade. Yeah. So that is because they reach a terminal grade. Why then do we still have 97 all age schools? Mm -hmm. And I must say 83 junior, junior high schools. Isn't that a lack of interest? In correcting a problem that states that in some rural communities there is nowhere else to go. Senator Campbell, shouldn't we be making some boarding schools, therefore, if they have nowhere else to go? So that they can go board and go to school because there is no connectivity between where they went until they're at 14 and stop. The research is there. Absolutely. But when you look at secondary high school, none, zero percent said they reached terminal grade. That's why they're not there. They continued ah. out of habit. What they see around there. But when you have a culture where a man say you done school, school so go work in the farm. School. You done school. school. You done school at ninth grade. And from 2010, there was a commitment to remove all our late schools. We are now at 2022. It would be better, Senator Golden, if we made it into a shift school and primary go morning and then the other one go night. Shift is not good. 
But my God, you cannot make them a leave at ninth grade. Because they have nothing else to do and nowhere else to go. But we are going to get worse. No, when it kept getting worse, I get getting more and more depressed. This one is showing? Jesus. We could go further. They look at a difference between why boys weren't going to school and why girls weren't going to school. Senator Golding, I don't want you to miss this one. They di divided boys from girls. The World Bank, UNICEF study. It says, World Bank based on Jamaica survey of living conditions. Senator Gale, 49% of girls not in school is because they're pregnant. 49% of our girls of school age not in school is because they are pregnant. We not even look at the 41% of boys that said they're simply not interested in them. Listen to what I'm saying. 10 and 11 grade. So when I hear we saying we want a seven year experience, at the third year, 41% of the boys say we done with this. And you say at two years. Listen, a man. 20% of boys say money was the problem. And the 17% say, boy, I reach terminal age. Another problem we have 12% of boys and 6% of girls were expelled. If rehabilitation isn't a part of youth punishment, then who will be rehabilitated? You expel people because they can't survive with others in space A. But you must then have the, 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 um, other reform schools. So we recommended that one School reform school per region. We have seven education regions. Should be established because the person who is a deviant should not be left on his own volition from the age of nine. <laughs> oh my God. 10% of boys not at the primary school were also expelled. At primary school. Primary school. But I go and look deeper into the whole concept of our girls being pregnant. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to read this. A whopping total of 59,591 births to adolescents were recorded between 2009 and 2019. In 10 years in Jamaica, based on statistical institute information, 60,000 young women Underage women. Girls. Girls. Proper term. Girls. Had a baby. Not get pregnant. Did not include abortion and all of that. They said gave birth. 60,000 young girls gave birth. So Mr. President, I would like to recommend that this time. Knowing that we intend for a seven-year secondary school experience, that it is sensible to review the age of consent from 16 to 18. Because if we want them to be in school, then sex creates a risk of 49% already being there. Make a look what UNICEF said. The reasons for age of consent, because a man might have said, so they're not big picnic. The age of consent is a tool used in the society to achieve some outcomes. Yes. The UNICEF reasons for age of consent, the objective of a minimum age of sexual consent is to protect adolescents from sexual abuse, from the consequences of early sexual activity on their rights and on their development. One of the greatest consequences of early sexual um, 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 
um, sexual, sexual, sexual activity is that they will become pregnant and lose their future. It further says that young adolescents may be lured into sexual activity by older adults based on our Jamaican circumstances here now in exchange for goods. And that goods could be take out the G and say food. You know how much of these nasty men out there about KFC yeah, and, and fast food to lure our little young girls suffering from the economic circumstances and poverty that they're in? The UNICEF says to protect them, making those from disadvantaged settings and poor background particularly at risk. This 42% is not equally distributed among the five quintiles of income. The highest income quintiles don't have 42 percent. No. The lowest quintiles who go into something and get 500 dollars. I have experienced. I took 400 kids from 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 his rural Saint Andrew, Senator Bunting, and I took them up to UWE for three weeks to give them that experience. And one day, I sat with the girls. They told me that, but sir, I get $300 from him at the time. Oh, $300 Jesus. from the person taking advantage of them. Some of their mothers were encouraging yes. participation because it was a tool. They were basically sex workers mm -hmm. for their family. We have to do something. It's a state of emergency. State of emergency. Underage sexual activity based on the recommendations of UNICEF presents a number of risks in relation to sexual and reproductive health, including unwanted or early pregnancy and exposure to sexually transmitted diseases. Early pregnancy and motherhood is in turn a primary determinant of school attendance. If we want to extend the secondary experience to seven years, we must consider... the age of consent to be moved from 16 to 18. So I make some recommendations here, Mr. President. We should also establish, where's Senator Samuda? He talk about minimum sentence. Statutory rape, is that the one that you're under age? Mm -hmm. yeah. A minimum sentence of 10 years. Minimum. You say 15? Senator Bunting said 25. I have no objection. But I'm saying 10. Because if, if gone at 15, then it, a man has said there is no justice. But you're robbing a future. You're killing a future. So, all right, my, my team said 15. Established a permanent pedophile registry. Them kind of move from community to community. You need to equip Sissoka with enough investigators to investigate all underage pregnancies and armed with the right to draw DNA from their suspects, yes. which is currently allowed, but not being done. Because if you have 60,000 in the last 10 years, at least 50,000 should be in jail. That's how you bring down some of these criminals, some of these SOE, because negative people are negative people. Do right. you think a man willing to kill is going to have a moral compass mm -hmm. to not participate in statutory? In underage, you don't need no witness. Evidence, DNA is there. So as to not criminalize adolescents, the law should consider a three-year exemption. We're not trying to criminalize a 19-year-old with a 17-year-old. But the 35 and 28 and 40 year olds taking advantage of. Oh, there were some at 11 and 12. Yes. Listen, no man. That is where the child diversion program comes in. Our youth diversion program. 
which remember when they came with the child diversion stopping at 80. Yes. We begged to say put it as a youth diversion and stop it at 30. Mm -hmm. But this lack of foresight. We also propose that sexual education and family planning should be entrenched in our secondary yes. so that they understand. You don't hear these voice notes with our little girls accepting that their sexual ability is their only ability. Voice notes in this country with 15 year olds saying she know how to keep a man with her sexual performance. She don't even understand the negatives. And it's getting even more promiscuous now. We want that to be entrenched. And with immediate effect, we should increase the budget to the National Family Planning Board. We could talk about it, Mr. President. They don't recognize it's a code red. In the 2020 2021 budget, you know, Mr. President, what was the budget for a program to reduce sexual, um, to re reduce teenage pregnancy? What? Nine million dollars. What? In a place where we get 60,000 people in 10 years, 6,000 a year, the Ministry of Finance put it in the newspaper that they have a program to reduce teenage pregnancy. Nine million dollars. Jamaican dollars. Nine million Jamaican dollars. Big things are going. That is 2020, 2021. You think that bad? In 2022, it was reduced to 7.8 million dollars. It was reduced to 7.8 million when the statistics is showing that this is a crisis. This is indeed code red. I want to go again, Mr. President, to a situation that we have, I look further again, where the World Bank starts to say, okay, let us look at equating learning um, measurements. So they apply some science and maths to say, what is the level of learning in different countries if we were to equate the experience? It's called harmonized learning outcomes. In the Caribbean, Jamaica was third to last. The only two countries worked was Haiti and Guyana. And based on what I'm seeing in Guyana now, we will be struggling round the back with Haiti. Haiti that we are now saying we are going to help with soldiers and this and that. We, what are we doing around there, Sir Senator Samuel? This country, Jamaica, that is used to winning everything. When we go up on the internet, we cause every other Caribbean, now we great on them what is. What are we doing about, by, about this situation? Yeah. That we are almost dead last in the Caribbean. I could go again. Senator. The World Bank says, UNICEF study, a child in Jamaica can expect to complete 11.4 years of early childhood primary and secondary education by age 18. According to the H Human Capital Index, we call it HCI. However, when years of schooling are adjusted for quality learning, <laughs> It's equivalent to 7.1 years. So basically our children get lunch money and get book and uniform and go to school every day. And losing approximately a third of their effort based on the quality. This is not me. It says there's a learning gap of almost 4.3 years. Because he was to get 11.4 based on his attendance. He gets 7.1 based on its quality. I heard the presentation this morning, Senator Samuel. Tell him to send him to move education. Quick and fast. 
We need some zeal, some energy. So, we not set you up, you know, but may I set you up. You understand me, may I say? We need something more than what we are getting over there. It says, low learning outcomes impede human capital accumulation. This is the part I wish Senator Webby was here. And according to the human capital index, listen this now. Yeah, man, but I want to listen. I can email it. No, for sure, may I send it? But not now, not now, Mr. Art already. But may I send it? It says, I send it a report, I know you like to read. A child born in Jamaica today will be 53% as productive when they grow up as they could have been had they enjoyed complete education and full health. Quote, unquote, not my opinion. You're half of your best self. A child growing up in Jamaica is 53% as productive as if they grew up, the, 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 the study says, with complete education and full health. So when the economy is stating that the workforce is unproductive, it's not a lack of interest. It's not a lack of desire. It's not a lack of ambition. How can you be productive in catching goats if you have never been taught how to catch a goat? Yeah. It means that ten men will do what one man could do mm -hmm. if he was educated and informed. How could you in this circumstance and these situations? It's a grim situation. This is a state of emergency, of emergency code red. and code red should be declared. Mr. President, let us look at what the education vision statement said in the Vision 2030 plan because the minister said we are moving in the right direction. The, the, the 2030 plan was supposed to have within it an understanding that by 2030 we were supposed to achieve certain things. I'll give you a synopsis. It says, and I quote, well-resourced. We don't disqualify. Mm -hmm. The first word. This is a ducks, one bar. In 2009, we wrote that by 2030, we should have a well resourced, internationally recognized, value based system that develops critical thinking, lifelong learners who are productive and successful and effectively contribute to an improved quality of life at the personal, national, and global level. The, 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 the report said that we're 53% productive. The statement that we don't know in the year, this statement. It says the vision focuses on facilitating equality, I'll come to that soon, of opportunities, social cohesion and partnership, and the plan envisages, envisages that the average beneficiary for our education and training system will have completed the secondary level of education. We just show 48% never attended. They, they, never, they ended the first three. We're not even talking about the passing. You know. the, the, the report said they're not attending the school. We also have 97 or 93, I don't want to put the wrong number, all eight schools. So therefore, this vision failed because they could not end secondary school. We have 80 other Pri um, primary um, junior. junior high schools. They could not. It says they should have vocational skills, be proficient in English language, a foreign language. Mathematics and science subject. Why do we write these things? Yes. When there is no effort to achieve them. Participate in sports and all arts. And be aware and proud of our local culture. Hey. What is our local culture now? All I hear the young boys and girls going around, them want gathering. Them fully done. Them are chopper. There's a song going around now. Guzu, 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 guzu. And there is no counter-arguments. That is the duty of the parliament. You know. 
that we should be examples and counter arguments to the negative arguments that are made before. We have a member of parliament that's a female uncle. He's a woman. Mm. Then how can we be <laughs> that the children are said they're my bosom? We have a minister of justice that said he wanted to legalize Obia. Sometimes we have to remind the country about these things. Mm. So how are we concerned that people kill people of a gathering? Mm. Children kill children. I think it was William, maybe, William. Over gathering. We have a member of parliament who was violent to his significant other on video. And we have a minister who said that who am I or who are we to judge? We don't see that there is a code red that is happening within our society. No, 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 no. I'm the point about it, not there. Teaching and learning systems that are international standard, these are the goals, world-class school environment, 2030, you know, we're 2022. When will I get the world-class school environment? That's who come to that. Attainment of equal and inclusive access um, and retention. Continue, I don't want to keep it too long. Because I think it has been established that we're in a state of emergency. Yes, state of emergency. The code red is that we keep on lying to ourselves that if we compare as a percent of GDP, we are spending enough on education. No. Senator Campbell, Give us the truth. we like to claim that we compare with the rest of the world when one measures the percent of GDP. It is like me saying that I should get the same house as Senator Dan Webby because I spend an equal percent of my income. Uh, and, and you know you're not gonna get that. No, my income is nowhere yeah, because near Dan Webby. I hear we have an income player of the other day, Senator Bunton barely win. <laughs> Senator Webby was clear, was close by. <laughs> the income player. So when a country said, because we are broke, the percent of our brokenness is equivalent. If you look here, it shows that Jamaica is better than Estonia as a percent of GDP. Estonia. So Estonia spent. 5% of their GDP, and we spend 5.2%. So we are going good. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Estonia spends per child 11,700, the OECD countries. Jamaica spends 1,100. US. Tell us where we're Go back, Senator Fraser. You see, we were at. Jamaica 5.2, look at the OECD 5.4. Barely made just out. So, yeah. Now let us look at the spend per child. The OECD 11,700, Jamaica 1,100. But we are going good when we use as a percent of GDP, but a percent of income in nobody's life can purchase a product. You think Senator Bunty never go buy a carrot and then say 2% of your salary, of your income? Oh, they don't know your income. It have a price. Right. Education have a price. Yes. yes. And we are, when they compare, we are about one third of Barbados. Mm -hmm. Trinidad, they way ahead of us. And we are boasting as a percent of our GDP, which has declined. It used to be 6%. And if you want a real prosperity, No, if you want a real crime plan. If you want a real crime, you fix that. Now, let me go into what my research has done, and I'll send the papers as well. It says um, funding. The education framework suggests that a 1% increase in the funding of education as a percent of GDP leads to a 0.9% growth of GDP. If we are at 5% of GDP and move to 6%, a 1 percentage point, if our growth was 4%, it will move to 5%. 4.9% actually to be categorical. Almost one to one for a 1%. One the research, because sometimes I wonder if it's don't know, we don't know, you know. It says you have a 14 percentage point improvement 
in children performance for every 1,000 USD spent per child. That if you spend an additional 1,000 US dollars per child, you will go to from 14% um, grade to 28%. And if you're at 50%, you go to 64%. How many of our children who fail is at 40% and that $1,000 would have carried them to 54%? US. Not being spent. We're being told that we have better things to do. The research says um, <clears throat> increasing spending up to 8,000 US dollars shows a clear impact, positive impact on education performance. However, having reviewed multiple countries, we see no evidence that after 8,000 US dollars, there is Satisfactorily, imp satisfactory improvements. So basically they're saying there are improvements up to 8,000 and then the level of improvement, not really, it, it tapers off. After that, now is an experience you have created. Yes. But below that, but below that that's when get the you are getting the benefits. In purchasing power parity, that will be 3,547 US in Jamaica. Can we have a, yes, yes. So we have to go in at the, in at the max now. So in the US is 8,000, but the purchasing power of 3,000, yeah, we are going at the deep max set now. Not no back of the class. So 8,000 US, 3,800 Jamaican can buy that. In the Jamaican context. You, 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 you understand? Right, right, right. Yes, which is three times. Not, so we just make sure we show that because it's not as far as we think. But you know we know how to turn with hand make fashion. So I'm encouraging us to put 70% of what is needed. Yes. That will mean that we need another $53 billion in the budget. We just get $60 billion more. We just get $60 billion more because of the inflationary impact on GCT and other things. You know how much education gets out of that $60 billion? $2 billion. Two billion. Two billion. So, President, go down again, sir. I said give all 60 to education. <laughs> go down again. Go down again. Go, go, go down again, sir. However, we must also be concerned about the disparity between schools. So, when we talk about funding schools, we have to also know that there are certain disparities that one must consider in the funding of schools. Yes. And I'm not speaking to alumni because there are no minimum quality of education should be led to voluntary contributions by others. That must be budgeted. If I give KC money, it might be for football or for track. The minimum experience should not be determined by if I feel to volunteer. But I'm going to use some schools in equal geographic space because yes. I start to wonder if it's the breeze. Hmm. Make some of our children now go on good. In equal geographic space, I see somebody on the wrong side of North Street present in the house. <laughs> oh, you like how we deal with um, Clarendon College the other day quite, because, quite nicely and quite I'm beautiful. Say, so so no 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 My God, starts dealing with way, but no problem. In the vicinity that I went to school, North Street area, there's a convent of mercy, Alpha. The recent report suggests they have an 89% chance of getting five subjects. I think that deserves a round of applause for the girls and the teachers of Alpha. St. George's have an 85%. I'm not so happy because Casey have an 83%. Holy Trinity have a five. We were busy training. Holy Trinity have a 5.3% chance. Can you believe that? And what has always been crazy to me, within that space, Casey and Charges have more support than Holy Trinity from the communities. When the communities' children mainly go to Holy Trinity. Imagine that, no man. 
KSE gets support just because it is located near them. Yes. And them associate themselves with our victories. A brand. Yeah. But where them children is going? That is why I must celebrate what I see Issa doing by separating the Walker Cup from the Manning Cup. Mm -hmm. Giving these other schools a reasonable opportunity to create community connectivity. Yes. You know, schools like Campia. <laughs> <laughs> but look, at this senator's face. Yes, I know Wesson is up there. Oh my God. No, Wesson is in the top 10. No, man, we're not sure the one where they're up in a day. Because only 42 schools had over 50% chance. Okay. Only of the 161 schools. Wow. Yeah, we don't want to show Campia. <laughs> so 133 to 161. This looks like about 30 schools. 5.4, 5.4, me now have to go through it. Look, Robert Lightburn had a zero. Trench Town had 0 0.8. Oh Denham Town had 1.7. Oh One of the schools on this list here, I went there to do some math classes. And when I reached a child 10 o'clock on a Monday, she had her head on the decks. Senator Samud, I said, what's wrong? She said, sir, I have gas. Yes. You know what was gas? 10 o'clock on a Monday. It means they're not even a Sunday Monday. You know what the, was the worst part of the experience? All the other children knew the solution to gas. Drink a soda. The other children recommended a soda. That's why it hurt me to my core. Because when I am teaching in these schools, I see say hungry children cannot learn. Sometimes when we in here and have a long night call today, we feel like we want faint. We have children that is supposed to be paying attention to the ear of a circle being pi r square. You must say, wait, pie? Pecan or apple pie. It's food in my defense. And yet in this country, the school said them run out of money for school feeding. Now, what was given to these schools? A hundred and approximately forty dollars per lunch. A hundred and forty dollars per lunch. The average small food, me not talk about coffin box, the small food on average is three hundred and fifty dollars. You know what the minister said? It is not for profit. If they were making a hundred percent profit on the two hundred and fifty dollar food, the whole of it would have been in making a restaurant in our high school. The cost of chicken, the cost of vegetable. Remember, we're not feeding them only for your belly full, you know. We're feeding them for nutrition. A research stated that within our schools, our girls are lacking in iron from thirteen to eighteen. And we now design a menu. To increase that. Then we wonder why they're not in school. The Prime Minister said that they found a 15-year-old with a gun. And that the, the, the new, the new law, law firearm bill will make an example of this 15-year-old to other 15-year-olds. You know what will stop 15-year-olds from not going to school? From food. Having five five bills for the week, we will go to school for the food. We proposed three meals a week for five weeks. What did we expect them to eat the other two days? It was proposed in the bill, in the, in the proposition. What we designed, not what we got, was three meals out of five. When we have 500,000 Jamaicans living below the poverty line of $200 a day. Is this not code a code red? red. Code Is this code not red. a code red? Come again, Senator Fraser Bates. So we propose that in addition to what the schools get now, go back up. That one? Yes. We must understand the objective of the education system. We want student academic performance. We want student safety. We want student socialization. We want stakeholder satisfaction. And we want efficiency. I'm wrapping up. I'm soon done. No, man, talk it up. 
So I took the time, Senator Fraser means, yes. to design a funding model that would consider these anomalies that we highlighted earlier. Sure. That will make for the schools who are being left behind have a better opportunity. And so therefore, we feel that students' performance is a function of the desired outcome, labor required, student needs, and number of students. And therefore, for the additional funding for performance, we should look at what their current performance is, what the desired performance is, and fund it accordingly so that we can get additional teachers and after-school sessions and that, that Casey and Campion might not need. So in addition to the $17,000 for secondary school, there should be an additional sum for the performance gap reduction, yes, master yes. teachers, and stuff like that. Yes, yes. For the safety component, we suggest that you should consider the plan size. So we have many schools that don't have permit offense in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Later I'm going to tell you that I recommend that the parents sue the government for, for under the occupier's liability for not taking due care of yeah. their children. Yeah. Due care means that you must have a permit offense yeah. at a primary yeah. school. Yeah. How can a primary school? Yeah. I know you agree, Senator Samuel. So therefore, to that extent, the size is important. The school age is important. The community violence ratings is important and the students' disposition to violence as well as labor required and number of students. When a school like Arden have 28 clubs and societies, compared to a school where have three and four, there's a need for greater intervention. Yes, if it's yes. even to induce the teachers to take on some of these clubs, yes, true. there's a need. Okay. But a lot of us think that school safety is only violence. It is not only violence but also the school infrastructure. Yes. At Decatur College, a child dropped from the second floor, injured herself because the, the railing, a board railing broke apart. Mm. Senator, Senator Bunting, you hear what I say? The president of the JHTA said in a recent conversation, Winston Smith, we have our schools, we have abundant schools, yet we expect schools that have been built from 1964 or earlier to operate and provide 21st century students and quality. That's, That's what he said. That's crazy. He further asserted that dilapidated schools could only produce students of mediocrity. That's true. That's true. I think it was Senator Bunting that said something to me that really blew my mind. He said the school looked the same as when he went to school. No, you went to school all along? 50 years ago. You understand? No, but it's important to accept that what we were training for 50 years ago is not. And yet the training factory, which factory look the same? Which bank look the same? Which farm? Look the same. But our schools? Look the same. Cold bread. This is a cold bread. So, Mr. President, I'd like to recommend that there was a loan of $43 billion that the government negotiated and had approved by the Chinese government to construct the Montego Bay Bypass. You remember that? Uh -huh. That loan that eventually they had to give China Harbor because it was so far ahead that China Harbor spent money already. And the Prime Minister, on his own volition, through his own decision, decided that he was no longer going to take the loan. And not sufficient conversation was had with the public. Yeah. He said in his, in his budget presentation, the Prime Minister stated, however, and I quote, the Ministry of Finance and Public Service um, sequentially indicated that Jamaica did not need to borrow from China to implement the project we could finance this infrastructure development from our own resources. We're funding 43 billion, I soon come back to that, 43 billion dollars from the budget. Mm -hmm. Now when they were, they had a loan approved. Yes. 
when they decided that we had 43 billion extra that we could no longer use the loan did they not recognize that our schools were falling apart so I'm recommended we go back to China, get the 43 billion and dedicate it to school infrastructure and infrastructure improvement. It is about removing a code red. Our schools, Mr. President, are falling apart yet we're building $12 million signs. Our schools are falling apart yet we are... Oh, that's about 17 million. And then the, 12 million. the school's falling apart and we're spending money on money. Designing money to, to, to show that there's political unity. Money can show political unity. Where we get this money? Listen, man. They, you know, the young people nowadays, them have a way to say, get rid of these people. They say, throw, throw it in the trash. Throw this entire cabinet in the trash, man. Throw them in the trash. Take some money. And, and send it out. Always in here. Keep them. The rest show them in the cash. How could a cabinet agree in Westmoreland that don't have toilets in some primary schools? How could they agree where there are blackboards dividing classrooms in Westmoreland? I'm going to go further than where they spend the 12 million. That, that 12 million. What is the parent at the Cartwright College going to feel when her child didn't have a proper railing but there is a sign not valued 1 million? Bill for 12 million. What is our priorities? Our priorities is to get a new parliament. Yes, it's a good thing, but is it a priority over what we are facing based on what I'm showing? Not a priority. We also look at socialization. Alternative sources of socialization must be considered. And so you have some communities. You have some communities very well organized. You have some police youth clubs. You have some communities that don't have these things. So when the community don't have these things, the school must be equipped. Yeah. Even after child care, yes. the school have to be equipped when the community don't have access. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, you remember me say? Yes. Me sound like me ready for you work. Yes. Ready give me work. work. Give me work. Give me work. Give me work. Somehow we can just pick up a child and drop them off en route and then pick them up in the evening. But when a community don't have that after child care, the school have to design strategies yeah, and methods yes. and get additional money from yes. the government so that the mother can say, okay, we can leave it till work done. Yes. 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 And a safe space. The school then becomes, because you know what, Senator Bunty? Our school infrastructure is one of the least efficiently used infrastructure. Yes. You use it from 8 a.m. and it's done by 3. And then you have four months waiting to use. Yet... We get it done. Imagine if heart was being in the after school programs. Imagine. Using the same infrastructure. Imagine if you could go weekend heart or weekend literacy. Imagine if we Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning had weekend literacy. Imagine. You imagine if we had mommy and me classes imagine. so that the parent and the child it is the least used infrastructure. Just imagine. What do we have? What kind of thinkers? Not so we say we want some additional money for socialization. The outcome gap in this case is what the school is offering and labor needs such as additional guidance counselors. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, I talked earlier about all aid school. All aid school is one of the worst concepts in the world. The school work hard to make some children pass from sixth grade to seventh grade. They go to other schools and then they keep the ones that don't pass. So they already have the worst of what he originally had. Yes. And then you send him all the other worst around and then make he, that be his school. Yeah. Mm. Are you understand? Yes. All eight schools. And then all eight schools don't have a dean of discipline. Secondary schools have a dean of discipline. But the all age ones don't. When you have a set of children that were the worst performing and oftentimes least disciplined. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Come again, Senator Fraser Bates. No, before we go to that one, make us go quickly. <laughs> Stakeholder satisfaction, we want to build that. But we want to go to efficiency. Yes. Because efficiency is how you transform the input into output. Right. They like to say that the principals are not doing The principals are getting nothing. Yeah. Nothing in, nothing out. I give you two bags of cement and say, where's the house? <laughs> two bags of cement can be lost. The and then say you're not efficient. First of all, it doesn't bother using two bags of cement. It does tough up. 
You understand what I'm saying? No, you look no. We want the efficiency. And I'm calling at this time on the private sector of Jamaica to make available for school boards individuals who are capable to assist in the management yes. of these school boards. Yeah, I'm not saying that the school boards are incompetent, but every businessman knows that efficiency is the lifeblood. Of he is automatic and instinctive in finding efficiency. And they are willing. I contacted them, some of them. You've been busy? I, I've been very busy. A training for the work. Yes, you put me, put me in a coach. <laughs> put me in. The Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, we're calling on you. The All Island Chamber, we're calling on you. Yes. The PSOJ, calling on you. Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, we're calling on you. The MSME Alliance, we're calling on you. My little entity, the Jamaica Manufacturers um, Association, now called the JMEA. Export Jamaica Manufacturing and Export Association. All the private sector we're calling on you. Indeed, Mr. President, when I contacted one entity in particular, the PSOJ, they stated that they had a database of individuals trained in corporate governance that was willing to serve. All right. You know, when you have a list, you have to get corporate governance. Yes, because there are certain things that governance allows you to improve. Yes. and guarantee. Yes. They say that they have that. That's why, Mr. President, I propose that being on these school boards should be a key cog of the Project Star community engagement. Program. Yes. Like yes. You hear about Project Star? Yes. yes. I, I, I must commend the PSOJ and in particular Keith Duncan, Mr. Keith Duncan for his efforts in Project Star. So and I look forward to when they list on the on the, on the um, social stock exchange. Do you hear about it? Yes. There's a social stock exchange that things like these can list on, and they plan to list. I encourage all of us, all Jamaicans, to contribute time and effort and money to this exciting program, Project Star. But one part of Project Star I want to call upon them is the corporate governance and management competence for efficiency achievement yeah. in our school system. To transform the local money where we have into great outcomes. Yes. That's what efficiency is. Yes. Have them on the board. Mm -hmm. And it's easier now, you know. Because it can be Zoom, Zoom meetings. meetings. You know, have to go down there every day. Afraid. You know, have to afraid. Yeah. And then when them get to know, say, you're for them. I, I'm, I'm from the ghettos. When they know you're for them, you're safe, you know. Yeah, take care. When they know that you are interested in their outcomes. Yes. And their children outcomes. In their children outcomes. Yeah. You are safe. Project Star, I lift my hat off to you, PSOJ, but I call on you to make and take it further. Continue, Sophie, because I'll think I make that point already. Now we have to go to our teachers, our facilitators of learning. Yes. Mr. President, <laughs> <laughs> teachers' attrition is a very serious problem in this country. But it was untruthfully downplayed and miscommunicated by the ministry and the minister of education. They lied. <laughs> and if I was to repeat one of our people, they lied, they lied, they lied. In press briefing, Minister Faber Williams stated 248 teachers have resigned from the public school system between July and September. What's the Mr. President, nowhere in that we were told that in 2021-22, 1,310 teachers resigned. We're not talking about the other 435 that retired. 1,310 resigned. The country was being given the image that this is in line with the norm. The year before, 723, almost double. What? Hmm. Crisis. Code. We were, when we, when, we, when we kept our conference, they said, there's a problem. They said, what are you talking about? We have enough teachers. Well, in 2021, 2022, that is what, 13 and 4, 17, so 1,745 teachers left the teaching profession. 1,098 entered. Hmm. That's a deficit. 
a deficit of almost 700. The numbers provided by the ministry suggest that in 2019, 2020, 390 resignations happened in that year. There's a footnote that says resignations for 2019, 2020 is for the period September 29th to January 20th. I don't understand why that footnote is there. However, in the combination, it is almost 1,000 more than 2019 and 600 and add more than 2020. Senator Samuda, when one teacher resigned who is in a secondary school with four classes of 40 students, one teacher impact 160 students. Wow. I went to a school in Montego Bay because I'm, I'm out and about. You're out and about. The principal says a PE teacher was teaching mathematics wow. for the last three years. Because the principal, the, 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 the minister, never also showed us that the graduates of 1098 is not a graduate in every single subject. The STEM subjects which are being recruited the most are not the graduates coming out in the most. But they don't want to break it down. They want to, to lie with numbers. But when the numbers come out, even as they try, you still have. 700 less teachers. Many schools still don't have their teachers. The teachers say that they are resigning for reasons such as inability to experience a reasonable quality of life on teachers' salary, unlikely attainment of desires of care and house. That's what they said. What's the response of the Prime Minister? To remove the benefit of the NHT that the teachers and public sector workers would have gotten to claim that that is equity. When they are, we call them, Senator Brown, essential workers. They are essential. Is it, they call them so for a reason. Are they being treated as essential? No. To this point, the teachers don't sign the great document that was sent out that was supposed to make everybody better. So why is the teachers incapable to see that they're going to be better? They said they couldn't get a house and a care. So like us, I said, after five years, why not give them 5% concession so they can get a care? Yeah. And then after 10 years, 10% concession so they stay. Yeah. Because they want to take out that. The principals are worried that even their concession. Now remember, it's a code ready now. Because I went to a school, Senator Samoon, and when I don't talk, the mother come to me and say, her son was asking, where is her BMW? Because the scammers had one. The teacher them a walk and the scammer them a drive. What example are we saying? Why then why them not embrace dunceness? Because the teacher who is the epitome of sense in the eyes of a student yeah. cannot afford a reasonable quality of life. That's why we recommend. They said the system limited resources which handicap the ability to be successful in educating our students. The teachers are leaving because they said they cannot achieve with what they are being given. Yeah. Senator Campbell, True. I can give you the experience of a teacher in a poor school. Today, Today code ready now. We have to expand on it. It's soon done though, only five pages. But I, I know you don't know, you know, you got, you got top school. <laughs> yeah, <that works>, <laughs> But you were in the back of the class, he told me. So everything no, all right. Was it was front. I want to show some pictures. A 40 minute class. The students in class A have to go and look for decks over the students in class B who gone P E R L. It takes 10 minutes out of the 40 minutes class. When it's finished, the teacher must reserve an additional 10 minutes. To write the homework on the board because none of them have their books. You hear what I'm saying? Chandler. Including the rental books. Chandler. The government who promised our student rental books. As of today, many students have not received one Shame. rental book. I'm going to give. I'm going to take an example of book and teacher. Wow. They will wonder why 17%. So the numbers are 
the numbers are showing what we have robbed of them. I'm going to get a report from a principal um, right now. No, I'm going to call the school because I'm The school requested rental books, 160 math books, mathematics books. Today they received 29. The principal reported that they don't bother distribute them. They use them as class resources. The teacher take the book and carry the class. The, the 29 and give the next teacher and go to the next class. How is homework going to come out of that? They asked for 160 maths books. Two. Them receive, 100, them receive 28. They asked for 160 math books. Three or three maths books. Them receive 27. So they never even give them one eye mask book and say go and use that until. They asked for 70 G of a C sec, they got seven. Wow. They asked for 38 social studies, they got six. Oh In the second set, they asked for 42 Longman physics, they got nine. Wow. Set for failure. Yet the minister come with a big statement. We're going to put two billion more in the activity. Mr. President, this is Code Red. Code Red. So, Mr. President. Welcome, Senator Langmore. Senator Langmore, welcome. Have Senator Langmore. She was on the wellness bench um, before she came. The final thing I want to ask, Mr. President, where are our missing students? 27,000 children were reported missing from school in the COVID period. Wow. We have received no report in recent times. Mm. The but we tried to pass them at the stoplight, you know. We know where the missing students. They are in gangs with guns at 15. Those are the missing students. Yeah. The police said that almost 17 and the murder charges recently was under 17. Those are the missing students. Yeah. Despite the warning of the principals and the Jamaica Teachers Association, the ministry put forward a, a, a summer camp that out of, the, the, out of the, the, um, total number of students available, 9,000 registered. When the, the, J, the Jamaica Teachers Association said, this is not a good plan. When the principal said, just come meet with us and talk to us. We don't know where these students are. So I said to you, Minister Favor Williams, let us, let us have lunch. Yes. Yes. Let us have lunch yes. and have a conversation. Yes. And then, yes. I will, well, after the, the conversation, mm -hmm. let us go around the island. Yes. Let us go to schools and talk to the principal. Yes. Let us go to schools and talk to the teachers. Yes. Let us engage the children yes. and say, what is it that we can do yes. for you to perform yes. and improve That's better? Yes. Minister Williams, let us engage the PTAs yes. and realize that we have some parents that cannot pay rent, right. much less subsidize the government's school book program. Yes. Yes. And Miss Minister. Minister Williams, if anything, I will drive. Ah. I will drive. So that Jamaica may Undercover. Undercover. increase in beauty, fellowship, and prosperity. Thank you. Yes. The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support. This is Muta Baruka. We want to present to you a wholesome kind of level of consciousness right now. So, subscribe and tell your friend them. This is Muta Baruka.